Hello friends, previously on nutrition, we discussed what a balanced diet of a human is. If you've missed that session, please hit the link given below. But as we look around, I'm sure you all see that our earth contains many more organisms and not just humans. So have we all ever wondered what do they eat or where do they get their nutrition from? So in this session, let's try grouping the organisms according to their food preference, thus deriving the mode or manner in which all living organisms acquire nutrition. We have all seen moulds that grow on a piece of stale bread, right? And because of this, we know that rotten and decaying plant and animal matter is a site for fungal growth as that fungus is getting its nutrition from the decaying and rotten matter. And this way of acquiring nutrition from dead, decaying matter is called as the saprotrophic mode of nutrition. Hence, it's not advisable to consume stale food or food after their expiry date because indirectly it leads to consumption of harmful microorganisms causing ill effects to your health. Let's move on to the next type of organism and see what exactly they feed on. We have all seen a parasite at some point of time. Now, parasites are organisms that live on the body surface or inside the body of another type of organism. For example, a leech is an organism that receives its nutrition by sucking the blood of another organism. While a roundworm lives inside the body of a human and receives nutrition from the human system by feeding on undigested food from our intestine. But please don't get worried. They are harmful only if they increase in number. Now this way of acquiring nutrition from another living organism without actually killing the host is called as the parasitic mode of nutrition. Let's move ahead and see how some higher forms of animals acquire their nutrition. Let's group them according to their food preference. Lions, tigers, cheetah, fox are all flesh-eating animals and hence we call them carnivores. While others like elephant, deer, rabbits, rhinoceros, cows and horses are all plant-eating animals and plant or herb-eating animals are called as herbivores. And us humans, by our own individual choice, may consume plants or choose to have the cooked flesh of other animals. So as humans can eat both plants and animals, they are said to be as omnivores. Now all these higher forms of animals we just mentioned here have a proper digestive system. Hence, they are said to be using the holozoic mode of nutrition. Let us look at all the examples together again. Can you find a common link in the way these organisms acquire nutrition? They all depend on others for their food, be it a dead or a living source. And this mode of acquiring nutrition is called as the heterotrophic mode of nutrition. And the organisms that use this mode for its nutrition are called as heterotrophs. Heterotrophs can depend for food and gain their nutrition from others because they are free to move. But what about the trees we see in our surrounding? They cannot move around in search of food. So what mode of nutrition do they use? From where do they gain energy for their survival? In our lower standards, we have seen that plants with the help of a green pigment called chlorophyll trap sunlight. They take water from the soil and carbon dioxide from the air and prepare their own food in the leaves, unlike the heterotrophs. And this way of preparing food by themselves without depending on any other living organism is called as the autotrophic mode of nutrition. Such organisms 
that use this mode of nutrition are called as autotrophs again a term that is derived from the mode of nutrition itself so in this way based on the manner in which living organisms acquire nutrients for their survival there are two broad modes of nutrition autotrophic and heterotrophic so at the end of this session let me ask you all a question Have you heard of a plant that eats insects and small animals? Yes, it's the pitcher plant. So what do you think? Which mode of nutrition does it use for its survival? It's a greenish colored plant with modified leaves. So it prepares its own food, but on the other hand, it eats insects to complete its nutrition and gain nutrients which are absent in the soil. So we can say it depends on others for its survival. Are you all confused? Relax. As an exception, a pitcher plant uses a mixture of both the above modes of nutrition to gain energy. And hence, it falls under the category of mixotrophs. These are organisms that use both the modes. Can you all find some more organisms that fall under this category? If you like this session, give it a thumbs up. You can also share it with your friends and leave your valuable comments below and subscribe to our channel Let's Tute. Thank you so much.